All right, here we go, guys. And today we are going to look at a whole lot of bay slash hybrid boats. So these are boats that generally have less dead rise. And for that reason, I'm not going to include dead rise figures in this video on each of these boat brands. Really not as important as an offshore center console would be. These are more of a boat that you can, you know, fish the shallows with, but still have the capability and a nice day to take you offshore. And we have a really a wide variety of them, including a CAD, including a sub $100,000 brand going up into the half million category. The world has gone crazy. As always, these are quick cuts. Spend a few minutes on each boat. I'll come back at the end with my thoughts. Uh, let me know what you think. As always, if you like these videos, please hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing. Something you don't see every day, and, and these are my good friends at Falcon Boats. Uh, I thought Matt McDonald would be here. I stopped at their booth when I walked in. They're right in the entrance, and uh, the, the, the girls at the booth told me, oh yeah, Matt's, Matt's on the boat, uh, but he's not. It, it was raining earlier, so this is their bay model. They're calling it a, uh, internally a Key West. It's not obviously affiliated with Key West. Uh, it's got a single Zook on it. I don't know the size. Um, but you can see that's very unusual. It's still a catamaran. You see how wide this forward area is, but it is built like, like for bay boats, like what bay boats do. Fishing the shallows, fishing inside, ability to run offshore, obviously, on a calm day. Um, and it's still a catamaran. And you can see casting deck up there, uh, pardon me, up here, storage and a secondary casting deck right there. No cushions on the boat, but clearly you can add cushions. Very simple layout, massive live well right in the middle of the of the stern the the rear casting platform too has storage underneath we'll try to find out from uh, matt linda gina the team at falcon what this is retailing for but um really unique uh, I, I know years ago single engine cats were not uncommon you had caracal you had some brands sea cat that made maybe not sea cat but caracal definitely that made smaller cats that could operate with a single engine. Usually they don't, it, the, the balance is not there. Um, especially as cats get bigger, you can't get away with that. But on this size, you can. And uh, that's what Matt's done here with this bay model. So hey, we're, we're at the Falcon booth now. We found Matt uh, when, we, when we looked at the boat. Uh, no one was there. So Matt, give us the, I, you know, I went through the boat. The, how big was that engine, first of all? Because I couldn't really tell. So that's a 150 that. on that boat? Um, we can rig up to 250 on on that particular model. Very nice. And what's the MSRP on a setup like that? Um, that I believe is 93. 93. Um, wow. For the thing, and then we got various options and motor packages and things right. we can do. That could, uh, to obviously, as you add things, fancier electronics, things like that, it'll it'll likely drive the cost up. But 93 base with that engine. Yes. That's awesome. All right, and how does it perform with, with one engine? Now, we were, I, I was mentioning when I was reviewing the video, oh wow, there's a train passing through. It was not unusual um, years ago to see smaller cats with a single engine. Give it one second, guys. I don't know how that, that uh, horn blasting on, on that train right there is gonna sound. Um, notice a steep difference with the handling characteristics? Uh, yeah, so a lot of smaller cats ran with singles. Um, it's pretty rare to see something 20 foot or higher with a single. Uh, there was a lot of work done to that particular bottom shape to get it to run really well with a single so it doesn't cavitate, uh, blow out in corners and stuff like that. That's common with a, with a single mounted on a cat. Uh, so this runs really well with the single um, and it gets great fuel economy because of that. Yeah, I can't imagine the, the inherent efficiency in a CAD and then you're adding only one engine, uh, not two. So yeah, I must, I'm presuming three miles a gallon or better is not uh, out no, of the question. That one at cruise runs about five. Wow, okay, okay. And starting at 93, all right, Matt, we appreciate it. I, I did the review, we're gonna include it. And I just, uh, with all the other boats, we have the prices, we didn't have it for this one. That's why I wanted to come back here and, and catch you before I left. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you so much, man. All right, back at Bay Boats, looking at Bay Boats. Here's a 24 Robalo, 300 uh, Yamaha, 134, 853, no haggle, real deal. Robalo, very popular brand. Let's step up. I'm gonna take my shoes off. 
That's the F300. We've said it repeatedly, the most reliable, bigger engine, maybe in the history of outboard engines. Uh, recessed boarding ladder there. I'd like it covered, but not a deal breaker. And, you know, the one thing about these bay boats, they have that, that layout where you have this expansive rear casting platform, typically part of it, like this one, folds up into a rear seat. Take the camera bag off. Um, the cavern is something or other here. It looks like a live well. Looks like there's a divider in there too. Might be the same on this side. It's heavy. Yeah. Live well with the divider. Slide out cooler on this side. A little because this is integrated into the boat, you don't have as much room, so it's a little more cramped. Uh, one, two, three, four rod holders on top. Uh, pardon me, on the bottom. Four on top. This one has a second station. How cool is that? I guess if you're, you know, hunting the beach for cobia or, uh, you know, other fish that patrol near the, near the beach, be good to have. Uh, doesn't look like there's any electronics on this one. It does have a glass windshield in the front. It's not three-sided though. A couple little cubby areas for stuff here. This feels smaller than that sea hunt I was on, a uh, 25 bay, um, and a little more expensive, but second tower. <laughs> That's probably why. Uh, I believe this opens forward. It does. There you go. There's a little porta potty in there too. Not finished though, uh, which is not a big deal, but just pointing that out. Not finished. There we go. You got storage over here, storage in the center. That center also acts as a step up to the forward casting platform. You see two cavernous boxes up there as well. You have these, these uh, backs um, for the forward seating, backrests. Um, you know, everything is obviously non-skid, so you don't slip while you're up there casting, especially if the deck is wet, the gunnels are wide, and non-skidded as well. So, I think that Sea Hunt also, this is what I was talking about, notice here how the T-top extends outside the structure, and it has to on this one, yeah, because of the second station. So, this is how you get up, you climb up here, and unfortunately it does rob some space i mean honestly on a on a 24 do you really need this because it, it it is going to make this a little tighter but it's really cool i guess if you like i said if you're if you're on the beach chasing uh chasing bones or chasing cobia or chasing sharks um you're not going to spot them as easily here at the helm as you will up there all right and that price is still good 24 foot boat 134 with a second station now let's see what we got next. I can't. I can take it as a down payment. Ah. I've got great in-house financing. All right. Sportsman 247 Master Bay Boat Series. Let's jump on board, see what we got. I... Right off the bat, I see two big corner live wells on this rear casting platform, non-skid on it. Um, aquarium style, you see right there. Same on the other side. They board from up, you access it from up here. Flip up seat here. It's also folding down to expand that rear casting deck. Four rod holders in the back, five more on top. A couple of kingfish rod holders. You got one Garmin display. A couple cup holders here, digital throttle. Flip up bolster seats, that's nice. And the casting platform extends to the front. They've integrated some uh, nice seating up here with rear, with the uh, the backrest here. And there's no, it's very low up here. So they do have a grab rail storage or a fish box, anchor locker, more storage here, forward seating area here. It's probably a small head in here too. Again, uh, Sportsman 247. Yeah, room for a head. Not in there now. Wonder what the price is. Nice little layout for a bay boat. 110. 110. And that's with a Yamaha F300 in Fusion White. Um, yeah. 
forgot to mention the the uh, electronics box up there and Garmin radio right here. Yeah, I don't know, 110. You guys tell me what you think of that place, but very popular down here in Florida, the bay boats. Not as much in the Northeast, but we are seeing more of them than we ever have. Um, and I think compared to perhaps other brands like Everglades, uh, th this, <laughs> this is a relative steel deal at 110, as crazy as that sounds. All right, let's see what's next. All right, Stuart, we had a 2024 Sea Hunt Baybo, 25. Great price, 114. Let's see, Glacier Green, let's step inside. 25, 3, 8, 6, 15 degrees of dead rise, 68 gallons of fuel. It's a great price. Uh, you see this massive rear casting deck. You see all the shoe prints. I did take off my shoes, but it is what it is. People are not necessarily going to. Trying to see if this, I'm guessing this is a 250 at that price, but maybe we'll ask. Um, so you got a big aquarium style live well here. Four rod holders right behind the seat. And then one, two, three, four, four more on top. These, uh, this dirty rear casting platform also swings up, so you have seats. I'm curious what these are. Yeah, storage. There's a five gallon bucket in there. It tells you how deep it is. Yeah, I mean, for the price. Now, it's very low gunnel. <laughs> it's below my knees, actually. Uh, but it's a bay boat. It's got a single garment for that price. Flip up bolster seats. Foot rests on either side. Little storage area, two cup holders, Yamaha diagnostic control, JL audio, three-sided glass, glass windshield with an actuator, compass right in front of the driver like it should be, Garmin radio up there, world's smallest glove box right here. You could fit a piece of paper in there, no problem. Um, same thing up here. What what engine is on this? I, I just couldn't tell. It's it's a 300. Okay, so it is a thank you. It is a 300 on the back. Uh, even more impressive for the price. I like this too. I wouldn't mind uh, fluke fishing in Peconic Bay, sitting up there, drifting along in comfort. Uh, obviously, forward casting deck here. There's going to be storage under all this traditional. Uh, you know, layout here for these types of boats, including uh, a backrest here that's removable. See a handle here. This is probably a little cooler, which it is. Actually, it looks like a live well. I would use it as a cooler. I'm not sure how many live wells you need. Actually, this might be uh, might be those two on this boat. And it looks like more storage here on this side. Yeah, tackle storage. A lot of boat for the money. I mean, I was not expecting an F300. Um, and you got the tackle storage, looks like on this side too, you do. Well, as far as bay boats go, this has been the most reasonable one I've seen so far. Re very reasonably priced. All right, we're about to step on a Canyon Bay 28. Uh, another bay boat here, V8 300 Merc on it. A uh, beautiful boat, just a simple layout. I, I, this might be the, my, my favorite bay boat that I've stepped on because it's just so simple. Uh, you see a jack plate here. Lift that engine up if you need it to. Get it uh, into really skinny water. Casting platform in the back. You got these three big storage boxes here. There's a live one live well. Uh, you know, guys here in Florida can't get enough live wells. Uh, this is storage. Could keep uh, cut bait, frozen bait in there. Another live well here. Looks like uh, you got combing pads all throughout. You got a big tackle center right here. Drawers and uh, room for trays and whatnot. Uh, this might be, yeah, bilge access. There you go. See that there's also a, a five gallon bucket in there. So it's quite deep. Rod holders here, four across, two cup holders here. One, two, three, four, five, six rod holders across the top, LED lights, combo cup holder rod holders all throughout the sides. You could also seat people here too if you wanted. Four cup holders here. There's a million cup holders on this boat. What were you talking about? <laughs> 
somebody was on before asking about cup holders. Uh, twin Garmin's. We have storage to under here. Very nice. You got a, more storage here. You got a footrest here. You got fold down footrests here too. Uh, you got an electronics box here. You have a Garmin radio here. Your light switches are up here. More storage here. You can put right on top here all your light vests. And then a bay boat, right? You come up to the front. In addition to more storage, uh, you can use this as a step. So you step here. See my foot there? Step up there if you want to cast. It's a nice wide casting platform, cavernous storage here. More storage under each of this. This is all non-skid, so you're not going to slide around. You're not going to slip. Uh, there's a mount for a trolling motor pre-installed, which is nice. You can see it's a windy day here. Um, and I'm holding grip very firmly with this non-skid. Here's a view aft, 28 foot bay boat. Just a ton of fishing room on this. This, this feels more like a hardcore fishing boat set up as a bay boat. You really do, you're, you can fish four to six guys on this, no problem, no problem. You see, wash down pump there, wash down pump there. I presume one is salt water, one is fresh water. Big LED light bar here. Um, yeah. Now, he told me the price and I forgot it already. <laughs> We'll, we'll ask one more time. Let's take a quick look at the head first. Yep, basic little head area. You could add a porta potty if you wanted or just use it as storage. This controls the jack plate um, up and down, almost like a, a turn signal. Very cool. I like this a lot, more storage here. A lot of storage on this boat. I mean, it's a 28, it's a big boat, but just a, a ton of storage. Oh, this is probably let's say 220. 220. Okay, 2 220 is the is the the boat show price on this. But you're you are getting a lot for 220. This has it feels like more storage and more room than than a lot of the more traditional center console boats. And and representing the 30 foot class, we have a Solace, uh, and it's a 30 HCS. Those of you that don't know Solace. This is a company started by Stephen Doherty. If the name Doherty sounds familiar in the boat building industry, it's because his dad, Bob Doherty, uh, was the chief designer at Boston Whaler for a ton of years. And then he went off and uh, started Edgewater. Then he founded Everglades. Uh, just high quality boats. Uh, I know Whaler gets a lot of hate, but uh, you can't deny the quality of the boats. And, Solace is no different. You see here, has a full windshield. This is a hybrid model too. So th this this will go in skinny water. This will go in offshore on a nice day. It's it's not a a true offshore boat, but it, it's a hybrid. It's it's between a bay boat and an offshore boat. Uh, I would categorize it probably more as an offshore boat, but we may include it in our bay boat category. Here we go. We got a big lounge up here. Look at all this storage here. This is very reminiscent of my CV, how there's no unused space here. Um, same on this side, no unused space. And what kind of bait boat has this much storage? Look at this in here. What kind of head compartment? You can sleep two in here. There's a nice sink, granite sink, porcelain head, beautiful wood, wood accents on uh, all the access panels to your electronics. Uh, just really high quality. Flip up bolster seats here, twin Garmin screens here. Let's see if we can get a price on this. Even the price sheet is luxurious. Four fifty two nine eight six. I I tell you what, the, this is finished a lot nicer than the thirty foot Grady's we saw, and it's probably priced about the same. Marine radio again, twin screens. Uh, look at those huge actuators to open that front window. Radio here, radio on this side. Two Icon radios. There's the 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 handles for them. Um, just really nice. Here's a glove box. Look at that. Deep and cavernous. Cup holder here. Joystick steering here. Like we mentioned, flip up bolster seats here. Even the material feels rich. And yeah, because it's a bay boat, that's a casting platform. And you can also use it as a seat. 
and it flips open, huge live well on this side. I'm presuming same on this side. Yes, sir, big blue live well, tension hinges, slide out cooler, sink, bait prep area. Um, and rod holders obviously on the T-top, really, really nice. I like this, I, I'm a, I really dig these solace boats. I just think they, they're not cookie cutter. And yeah, the, the, they might be priced high, uh, but so many boats look exactly the same. If they didn't have badging, you would never know what you were on. You, you honestly can't say that about Solace. I, I give them a lot of credit for at least daring to be different and innovative. All right, guys, apologies for the wind. Hopefully the windsock knocks it down. Here's something you don't see every day, a 31-foot bay boat, a tidewater. My buddy Todd Mann runs one of their uh, 24s up in New York. This is their 2024 310 or 3100 Carolina Bay bay boat. Looks like it's a 10-foot beam on a bay boat, uh, 800 max horsepower, unreal. I mean, bay boats with 800 horsepower. Let's see if we can, we can uh, step inside and take some video. I think these are the V10s, to be honest. Yeah, they are. They're the 400 V10s, so max horsepower on this. You see the power poles or the power pole type uh, company. I, I'm not sure. Oh, it is power pole. Okay. I know there's some competitors out there now. Let's see if we can uh, step on without uh, falling and hurting ourselves. This is nice when you do step on. There's a step right there. You step on that. Easy access. You got your flip up seats here. You lower this and it creates a casting platform. You see it's got the sea deck type material on it, also on the back, so you have secure footing. You'll see rod holders and cup holders up the gunnels. Mezzanine facing seats here. More cup holders over here. Four really easy to reach. These are level with my eyes, or not four. There's six rod holders here on this rocket launcher. Big LED light bar facing up. Look at the access here to the bilge and it's gel coat finished. Really, really nice. Uh, same setup on that side, on the starboard side, as we saw here on the port side. That little step there as well. Nice uh, uh, clip up bolster seats here. Got some kind of little storage bin here. Yeah, there are the keys and everything. More storage here. Put a cell phone, put your wallet. Uh, two, two layers here of uh, foot rests. See two big Simrad screens. Wrap around windshield, glass, actuator up there to let in the breeze, Simrod engine diagnostic display up there, Simrod radio here, a couple of three cup holders actually here, another little glove box here, pretty deep actually, joystick steering on a bay boat, what the, uh, <laughs> and we looked at the price earlier, uh, it's a big boat for a 31 man. It's a big boat. You see, it's got two steps on it too. Holds 220 gallons. Um, the the price at the show is right around 315, 314.999. Uh, porcelain head here. Ton of storage over there. More storage under there. Step to step in. I'm sure I can stand up in this if I try. Big lounge seat up here too. This is really nice. I mean, and it's curved. You could, you'd be very comfortable cruising up here as long as you're not in like some crazy chop. They've done a nice job too with the, with the handles being um, not impeded by the cushions. You'll see there too, it's got storage all around. Huge, huge casting deck. You can use this as a step right, we got, we got to, a to get up to the, to the casting platform. More storage up here, anchor locker storage up here. Uh, again, this is likely a very cavernous storage box up here. Rod holders, if you wanna, if you wanna come up here with two rods, if you're casting one way, uh, put the other rod in the other rod holder opposite of where you're casting. Um, yeah, I mean, when, and I don't want this to sound like a knock on Tidewater because I'm not trying to knock Tidewater, but when mid-tier boat companies are building 31-foot bay boats, has the world gone crazy? I don't know. I mean, you, you see them from companies like Sea Hunter and, you know, the, the, the more custom boat builders, but, uh, you know, when a mass production boat starts building something this intricate, 
Is that a good thing, bad thing? I'll let you decide, but a very cool boat nonetheless. Let's see what we got next. And hey, what we got next is me coming back to offer my thoughts. And look, I'll be very honest. I, it, I'm not a bay boat guy, right? Most of the fishing I do in the Northeast is uh, either in deep bay sounds or in the ocean. Uh, there, there are more days where you will need the higher freeboard. Uh, I would personally, if, if I were picking a bay boat, I would stay under 100 or right at 100 if you had a T-top and get that that beautiful little Falcon 22 at the beginning of the video, the very first boat. That That's my opinion only. There are some really fancy schmancy boats here in this Bay Hybrid category. Let me know in the comments which you would pick and why. And, uh, you know, again, I didn't mean this as a knock on Tidewater. I think they build a very quality, you know, value brand based boat uh, that didn't come out right. But I, what I'm trying to say is for the money, they, they generally build a decent boat. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, would you buy a 300K plus bay boat from them? I don't know. Uh, I'll let you guys decide in the comments. Hope you enjoyed the video. As always, if you like these videos, hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber and you like content like this, please consider subscribing.